Hello, everyone. Just a quick word from your friendly editor slash husband. For all of you who listen to So I'm Watching This Show and own an Android device, do me a favor. Go to the Google Play Store and download the Podcast Republic app. It's a fantastic app that allows you to get all of your favorite podcasts directly on your Android devices. I use the app and love it. I can search for the podcasts I want to listen to, select them as favorites, and have them all just a click away. Make sure you set so I'm watching the show as a favorite so you don't miss any new episodes. Again, the app is Podcast Republic, available on your Android device. Thanks! Oh, I actually, we had talked about it a little bit, but I asked uh, Will the other day if we could or how we would go about doing road shows, like where we're not in our locations. Okay. And he was like, yeah, we 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 could do that, to be quite honest. And I was like, because we've talked about wanting to go to, like, Disney World and oh, do, yeah. like, an Epcot episode. Uh-huh. And he was like, that actually be a pretty good idea, to tell you the truth. So, if this... Oh. I. How do we do it? <laughs> uh, we would need to get clip on mics. Oh, okay. And okay. We can record on our phones. We can oh, gotcha. install right. GarageBand on our phones and stuff. And we would just have to try and find some out of the way nooks, which I'm an expert on that. Yeah, you are. Especially good at that. So- somewhere like Epcot. And so we can kind of go and ride rides and talk about it and stuff. And I thought it'd be fun. Yeah, I it'd like be fun. Maybe as soon as this fall, we might be able to. We'll see. Especially if we start with Epcot. But yeah, definitely. I didn't intend for that to be an opener. I actually was just telling you that because I thought it was exciting. (laughs) Hello, everybody. I am Will. And I'm Kristen. And this is why I'm watching this show. On today's episode, we are going to have what I think is going to be a very casual, freeform conversation about the... Is it Amazon? Yeah. Yeah, Amazon Prime show, <laughs> The Boys. Uh, a couple things right out of the gate. Uh, and I guess I will go ahead and say this, but I have been dealing with an issue all summer. I have been dealing with a lot of issues this year. Our, the year of us, this 2019 year of us is <laughs> You've really... You've been dealing successfully with <laughs> I a have. lot of issues. <laughs> I have. Uh, but my mother has been sick and she had to have extensive surgery on her liver And it was getting pushed around, and as such, we ended up pre-recording some episodes and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I mentioned it on the show, but we've talked to a few people here and there, so I just want to give everybody the clear that we are mostly through the woods. Um, She has had the surgery, everything is okay, and we were sort of – they're still monitoring some things and testing some things, but we were given essentially a 95%, you know – good to go from the doctor so this is the first episode we're recording since and i will be pretty much stuck at home taking care of her for the month of august so uh as you probably will have already noticed we had some some not deep dives but like some (laughs) people seem to be really into the brennan fraser episode that came out today i was like maybe we need to cover more like Kind of zany because our Halloween stuff did really good too. So maybe yeah, we need to go did. more genre. All right, let's let do us know it. if let's... you want these Disney World episodes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Give us a reason to go. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a reason to re- ride Soren again. Oh my god, <laughs> we could do twenty minutes just on. I Soren. was gonna say I could write a dissertation <laughs> on Soren, new and so, old. So I feel like I'm frequently disclaiming this, but it is extra true for this episode and this show that. I just put the show on and started watching it, and Uh we knew we had to talk about some things, and so we were like, let's just talk about this. And so I was not taking notes. I do not know their names. I didn't I know most of their names. (laughs) Okay. You're also ahead of me. I am, and I haven't rewatched the first... I Mm rewatched the first one mostly with you yesterday, but then I did not watch the second one again. So this is definitely more of a vibe. Yeah. We're we're gonna kind of just chill and and like discuss the show versus like recapping it and give you giving a point by point. When we're doing episodic, we tend to to try and really sync it up, and we've attempted to cover things that we've already watched before, and we've had very mixed results. So we'll see how it goes because effectively, I mean, you have a lot of information I don't have. Yeah, I'm gonna and do my very best not to not to spoil anything. I've I've got a pretty good. I can't go as far as to say that I've cracked your code. We'll just do this entire episode in friends quotes. 
<laughs> too, bad somebody's not, <laughs> too bad somebody's not named Vikram, you know. <laughs> this is Vikram. Oh my god. Oh wait, no, now that you brought up friends, I saw a girl at the grocery store the other day and she was wearing a t-shirt that said, I'm just a princess Consuela banana hammock looking for her crap bag. For my crap bag. <laughs> and I, she like walked away from me before I could say something, but I wanted to be like, that's the best shirt I've ever I seen. I would have chased her down <laughs> it, was, it was incredible. Ma'am, come back. <laughs> so do we want to establish it before we dive right in? I was going to go right to a spoiler, but. D- establish it a little. Let's establish it a okay. little. Two hours later. Are you doing it? Or oh, sure. I'll do it. Okay. We're a little messy. We actually haven't sat down in over a week, the two of uh-huh. us. Okay. So basically, The Boys is a TV show on Amazon. It is basically if superheroes were real, but it's also like a conglomeration and it's like darker and it's weird and it feels like it could really happen. <laughs> well, it caught my eye because and I don't know if if anybody else does this, but do you ever half process things? And it can even pique your interest, but you there's just a weird mental hurdle that you never quite get over. Yeah. Because anytime I sign into my Amazon Fire, there was this like graphic of like what looked like Chase Crawford dressed up in like an aquatic vest. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how odd. But then I was (laughs) because I was always on my way to Hulu or Amazon or Netflix or whatever. Sure. And so I never actually sought out the answer you know what i mean i was like and it did keep striking me but i think there was a part of me that was like surely not no no that can't be that's definitely somebody that just looks like chase crawford and i was like it's like a new musician or something i have no idea and so finally i think you brought it to my attention and i kind of was like oh that's real and you were like yeah (laughs) and i was like oh i just kind of thought it was a long form like punked i don't know So we finally sit down to you guys watched it and you had a very roller coaster of emotions through the first episode. Yes. But you pretty quickly landed on that you were enjoying it. Yes. And so I sat down and watched the first episode and pretty immediately, and I do want to give Will credit because I think he's mentioned this to me first, but pretty immediately, the first thing I thought of was this was giving me heavy True Blood vibes. Mm hmm. Not in the vampire sense, but just in the whole tone and scale of it. Yeah. It was very adult. It is a hefty premise that it asks you to just accept. Mm -hmm. But once you do, it is like shockingly watchable. It's it's, it's like it's super compelling in this like way that really dances between like tawdry beneath you like blech, but also a little bit kind of prestige yeah i was gonna say it also was reminding me a lot of watchmen yeah the movie the movie which i know is a dirty word for some people yeah because I, I, I said in particular i was like it was kind of like true blood meets the hunger games with like a little bit of any given sunday like a mm-hmm. like a football because there's there's basically a conglomerate and what are they called? Vought. Vought. I was going to say Viridian, but that is better <laughs> off dead. Uh, oh. Vought International. And they basically own, they they like represent the superheroes. Yeah. And there's like roughly 500 in the world, or was that just in the United States? I think it was the I th- world. I think there's 200 in the United States. Okay. And it's sort of like when you are super, you... But I, I yeah, at least not yet. I haven't seen that. They're, they're not like registering them. No, they're like you can you can, I guess, choose to be public about it. Yeah, you can still have anonymity. But I think you said that it was realistic. Did you call it realistic? Um, I said it's like darker and, and as if it could really happen. Yeah, I, I can't go it's, that it's far. Or, no, well, it's organized in a way that feels like what that we feels would do. Exactly. Yeah. The way that they have franchised these people yeah. and leveraged yeah, yeah. them to make money feels the most right. And so in that way, it's like sports because there's like a scene in the first episode where Elizabeth Shue is, she's like... Perfectly well, cast, by the perfectly way. Perfectly cast. I started to say she's like their mommy, and then I was like, too literally in a couple (laughs) at least one instance two literally in one (laughs) instance specifically and that gets more if you can believe it (laughs) 
I'm in. I'm so in. It's so weird. It's, it really does exist in a like American horror story. I cannot believe that I'm being allowed to watch this. Sure. Yeah. yeah and yeah. like responsible adults are like, and it's not even, they're not even lowering themselves, but we're, we're in this place where, cause this is on a streaming service. So we don't have to deal with the FCC. So, I mean, we're really pushing boundaries in a way that I'm thrilled by. Yeah. <laughs> But, but it, it it does also it gives me pause mm-hmm, momentarily. Mm-hmm. So, like for instance, I'll say when we put on the there's, there's 120 went, days of Sodom vibe going on. You sure. <laughs> so I will explain what you said. Where I went on a roller coaster for the first episode. Basically, last week Will was like, "I want to watch this show," and I was like, "Cool, me too. I like a bunch of the people in it. Let's do it." So we sat down. The first episode starts, the warning card comes up, and it's got, like, 11 of them, and one of them was rape. And I was like, shit. I was like, that's Because not... you're pretty good on rapes for... I'm super good on it for now. For the time like... being. <laughs> super good. The magicians broke the mold. We don't need to I revisit. I don't need to keep, <laughs> keep it going. Exactly. So, basically, I was like, well, that's not... That doesn't make me feel great. And I was like, is a superhero going to rape a human? Like, is this just like a... Is it going to be like a secondary storyline? What the fuck? So, we're watching it, and nothing's really happening. And I was like... Okay, you know, it was, like, funny, and I was liking it. And then the scene with Starlight and the Deep happened with Chase Crawford and Aaron Moriarty. I was the most upset it was him, because I had yeah. heard an explanation of the scene. and Okay, so I was really upset it was him, too. And when the way that he framed it and everything, and the way that he was like, you're new, and I'm, like, number two here why would they would they would believe that you attacked me and whatever and it was very like pushing his power on her and everything and so i was like good lord i was like we are gonna have to watch nate archibald rape this virginal like she-ra character and i was like i'm not into it and then it legit cut away and like didn't come back and so i was i was like well maybe that wasn't it and i was waiting the rest of the episode like on pins and needles painful pins and needles like for this rape that i was expecting to happen and when it didn't happen i was like well that must have been it an off-screen coerced blowjob mm-hmm. and i was like that wasn't what i was anticipating and it wasn't quote unquote i understand it's still terrible it wasn't as bad as i was anticipating and so i was like oh Okay, but unfortunately, we were halfway through episode two by the time I realized that. So I had this like stink over the first two episodes that I just like couldn't get over. And so when I was rewatching episode one with you, that was when I officially was like, no, no, this is like solid. It well, because I mean, it absolutely is still assault and it like we don't witness it. It happens off screen. And in that regard and a lot of other ways, it's like I already mentioned like organized like mainstream sports, Mm -hmm. but it's also like celebrity. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was a casting couch, essentially. Uh And the way that they're playing with fame and like how the the standards that the superheroes are held to Mm -hmm. are it's not even that they're different because they're held to a higher standard, but they're given <laughs> a lot so more many leeway. passes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so it, it's one of those things where I'm like, man, this show is like really going to some places and really saying some things, considering that it's kind of like a tits and blood type of show. You know, yeah. it's like there's yeah, a lot yeah. of gratuitous violence and a lot of like nudity. And, you know, it's I've I have personally thoroughly enjoyed this trend where now they're kind of like flipping the the not so much flipping the script, but we're we're really dishing out some of the male nudity. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, it was delightful to see Chase Crawford's butt cheeks <laughs> as opposed to, you know, Aaron Moriarty's boobs. Plus, that was the other thing where I was like, she already got extremely raped on Jessica Jones. Mm-hmm. I was like, I don't. Th- I don't need that to be like the defining trait of her career thus far. Mm -hmm. It just, it was all very, I just, I needed to address it because it really put me off at first. And then I was like, and then it like, it earned it back, I guess. And having not seen any of the rest of the episodes, it appears like the plot's not over. Like she's really sort of like, correct. Not leveraging it against him, but, but she's not taking it lying down basically. Yeah. So it's there. It is 
that is what it is. The actual plot is Jack Quaid plays a character named Huey, Mm -hmm. whose girlfriend was... Horrible? Accidentally. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I wasn't going to go there. (laughs) <laughs> I'm Kristen gonna go wasn't there. a fan of her, and she was like sweet when I was she so died. fucking pumped when she died. I was like, she was oh. a lot. She came in real. She came on real strong. Like she came in at like a twelve, and I was like, <laughs> dial it back to a four, and we might be able to handle this. We're we're like never would we be pining for Jessica Shore? <laughs> we're like, no, we, yeah, but I, we, she would have been better. She would have been more nuanced. <laughs> And so she was accidentally murdered by one of the supers in a, I mean, hysterical way. No, hilarious. I laughed a lot. Did you? Okay. Yeah. I was like, oh, well, at first I was like, oh, shit. And then I I just was like, that's just hilarious. And then he like looks down and he's like still holding her arms. Mm -hmm. It's hilarious. He was running. It was a train or. Yeah. A train. um, Yeah. He was running and she got in his way. And so he ran through her. She like exploded. And he said, mentions later that he accidentally swallowed one of her molars. Yeah. And it was like when you swallow a bug. Uh-huh. It's that kind of humor. It's it's definitely dark, dark comedy stuff. So he kind of wants to fight back against this organization. And they're trying to bribe him. They're trying to pay him off. And I mean, then- okay. Bribe is a tough word. I wouldn't say they're trying to bribe him. They're doing what a corporation would do and being like, we're, you know, not admitting any fault, but we hope that this helps. I'm not defending them because everybody's corrupt in this, but I do think that Huey is, like, taking it too far. Well, sure. Especially, especially for her. He's too upset (laughs) about Robin. (laughs) He's too upset. And it was legitimately an accident. (laughs) He didn't run her down on purpose. I don't know. I just like, I have sympathy for Huey. Well, there is a mystery because they don't, they don't know where he was coming from or where he was going to. And so like there wasn't an actual And they think he's on this drug. I get it. I just think he's overreacting for that girl specifically. (laughs) (laughs) You expected him to be like, phew. Well, no, of course (laughs) not. They were talking about moving in together and stuff, but like, I was not a fan of her at all. So then enter Carl Urban as somebody named Butcher who is in the FBI, but maybe not. He's not. Okay. He, I think he was. Mm Mm-hmm. And he's trying to infiltrate them. Yeah. And so... I don't know about the A plot, B plot, C plot. We we mentioned Aaron Moriarty plays Annie slash Starlight. Yeah. And it starts with her being like inter- introduced or like what would recruited. you? Recruited. Yeah. Recruited yeah. into the seven, which it appears that like most of the super or like much of the superheroes are like represented by this company. Mm-hmm. But within the company, there's like a a power team called the seven and they're like the Avengers. They operate in New York. Yeah. And so she was recruited. She replaced somebody, didn't she? Yeah, but I don't Lamp think Lighter? we ever I don't think we met them. Yeah. Well, I think it was Lamplighter, and I feel like if they m- m- said it, we should know it. She's also the second girl. I don't know if they've ever had any more other than, girls. More yeah. than two. <laughs> but I noticed that. And her name is Starlight, and she can emit radiant light. Could you do Yeah, I think she's else? really strong too. Yeah, okay. It's also not just like radiant light, it's like explosive light. Yeah. It's not just like nice. It, mm-hmm. it will kill you. So anyways, I, I mean I started this by saying we weren't going to detail the plot and then I f- essentially did just that, but <laughs> I was really liking it to the point where I was bummed because we we said we were going to talk after the second episode and I kind of wanted to just plow through. Yeah. So what I started to say was that I've effect I've kind of cracked your code. Because something happens with the character Translucent, which Mm -hmm. it's so funny how awful so many of their names are. Yeah. Like, I mean, I know that that's the the joke. Yeah, (laughs) that's the joke. (laughs) But when they were like fighting him and they were like, Translucent doesn't mean invisible. Yeah. Like, and they, they were fighting him and then... It, they like electrocuted him and i was like oh i was like i'm bummed they said something about him being dead and i was like i'm bummed that they killed him off i was like because he was willing to get naked and throw his dick around and i was like <laughs> and that i want to reward that sort of behavior from <laughs> actors on shows by keeping them gamefully employed 
And I looked at you and you just made a face where I was like, well, he's clearly not dead now, because if he were, you would have been like (laughs) noddingly like, yeah, me too. (laughs) So based on your face, I was like, well, he's clearly not dead now, but he cannot be long for this world. Mm -hmm. And then someone else made a comment to me about, I think it was Will, he told me about a character who gets a bomb put up his butt. And I was like... Well, if you've got a naked guy (laughs) (laughs) whose, like, skin is indestructible. So you cracked Will's code, not Uh mine. (laughs) Well, I mean, based on your look, I was like, well, he's not dead now, but also he (laughs) will be. And so, yeah. So, R.A.P. Translucent, who was... Well, not yet. Well, he died in episode two. Was it seriously only episode two? Yeah. I mean, that's all it. Shit. (laughs) I mean, there's only eight episodes. No, I know. I just like I felt like it was more recent to me, and we've mm-hmm. watched five. So, yeah, his name was Alex Hassel. Well, apologies, I guess. So but it was pretty spectacular. Though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really into it. You know, we we have a couple other things. Um, Jennifer Esposito is rattling around. <laughs> She's the deputy director of the CIA who has history with the butcher. Yep. And Simon Pegg is doing a passable American accent. (laughs) Yeah. As Huey's father. (laughs) Passable. I mean, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Oh, for sure. I would be remiss if I didn't mention Black Noir. I I can't explain why that. Well, I mean, I can can easily explain why that is so funny to me. But it's It's hilarious. His name is Black Black. Yeah. It's (laughs) It's hilarious. But I, I told you, I was like, I am hardly bilingual. I was like but I'm familiar enough with the word noir that yeah. my brain translates it automatically. Automatically, exactly. So when you say black noir, my brain says black, black. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, okay. We did talk a little bit about Elizabeth Shue as mm-hmm. Madeline. So this whole thing with her and Homelander gets more. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> I can't I, say much more. Yeah, but no, there, I, I understand. There is, a, there is quite a, like, uh, I don't necessarily want to call it an Electra thing, but there's uh, that, like. Yeah, that's where it felt. There's like stuff going on with the two of them. I also think that that actor, whoever is playing him, what's his name? Who is he? Because he, he looks like three other people. All yeah. Of, like, he looks like the knockoff of the of this character it's it's yeah. not that it looks like if you put like henry cavill and chris evans and hugh oh, jackman into and, like, a blender in a blender like, yeah <laughs> so his name is um anthony star and i don't think there could have been a better person for this role specifically because there is something about him that is so fascinating because he's obviously very handsome and he has a clean cut look at first glance mm-hmm. but if you keep looking at mm-hmm. him he almost has like fangs and he's mm-hmm. like dead behind the eyes it's it's so sinister perfection perfection and because that's where i'm having that's where i'm having the most like almost akin to like butterflies watching the show because i don't know who i'm rooting for mm. because on one side i want to believe in this world yeah like i want to believe in cuz i mean this is some mount olympus shit we're getting into like oh yeah especially again i'm going to come back to it especially the scene with homelander and uh madeline with elizabeth shu where they made it clear that she had a pregnancy and she is I mean, Elizabeth Shue has got to be pushing 50, right? Uh, She is over 50. Yeah. They 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 commented on it. Mm -hmm. And then when she started lactating in the middle of that, I was like, this is some fucking Mount Olympus shit. Like, Mm -hmm. I was like, holy crap. And I just, and even because, like I said, I was like bummed out that the Deep was a jerk because it's Chase Crawford as like a knockoff Aquaman. I want to be on his side. I mean, I all I all I'll say about that is he gets more as well, and -hmm. you kind of realize that he's just like a bumbling moron. Yeah, I kind of figured. Because she, I mean, read him for filth by the second episode. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing is just so gross. Because, I mean, we talked about this in Glow and a couple other things. But, like, the problem, and and I really didn't want to go back to, like, the assault stuff. But the problem with it and what I find so frustrating is that in so many of these cases, if actually gone about, like, not cordially, that's not the word I want, but, like, decently, Mm -hmm. 
there's a good chance they could have hooked up. Like, if he actually just, like, hit on her and, you know. Yeah, but I he mean, wanted to keep his power dynamic in the group. Yeah, it's gross. And also, I mean, it is, It I was like, I wouldn't. I mean, they're co-workers at this point, like literal first day of the job is a little yeah. too soon to be. Yeah. But I don't know. I it's it's uh, uh. I, I, I am I am more fascinated with the show than I thought I was going to be. I was expecting it to be kind of like a knockoff. I mean, kind of like I don't want to say anything mean or rude, but it's like I watched a couple like a season and a half of Salem on WGN and it was mm-hmm. watchable. But I was like, this is on WGN. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, or like when we were watching the Royals on E, it was like, you know, whatever. And the the quality of this is more and better than I was anticipating. And well, this is based on an actual comic. Uh, okay, yeah. There so you go. that could definitely be it. Also, Eric Kripke is the one who's like doing it, and he's in a ton of stuff. Mm. Uh, Supernatural, most specifically. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, I, I'm I'm in. So so yeah, you did mention that there is a possible drug called Compound V that's yes. going around. Mm-hmm. There was a superhero sex club that was kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, anything fantasy in anything fantasy with like a budget, I'm there. So yeah. same. I'm going to slog through season one of Carnival Row because it got picked up for season two. So uh, did it really? Oh, yeah. It's already picked up. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. It looks so dour. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We're going to rejoin the adventures of Tuppence Middleware and Savage Bombastly or whatever their names were. Oh, fuck. I had it until you said it. <laughs> Ry- it was Vignette. Rycro- Rycroft Philistrate. Philistrate. And vignette stone moss. Vignette stone moss. That's it. <laughs> so good. We need to play like which one of which one is a character from Cats and which one is from Carnival Row. And <laughs> <laughs> okay. Bomb ballerina. <laughs> Jenny Annie dots. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I anticipate having more to say, but we will. So yeah, we definitely will. <laughs> so press. Play. Keep listening. Don't Keep press listening. any buttons. Don't, don't we'll touch be back that with dial. more. <laughs> I'm done. Cut me off. Cut me off. All right. Goodbye for now. <laughs> so I think I've decided. Well, <laughs> okay. Hulu is my favorite. Okay. All around. I think Netflix has the best original content. Mm hmm. And I think Amazon, by far, has the best interface. Uh, yeah. I love the Amazon Prime. First of all, the 10 seconds back button fucking works. Yep. And more than once. All of the <laughs> the buttons are the right amount of sensitivity. And they uh-huh. work. You can adjust the size and color of the captions. That was a game changer. <laughs> right? <laughs> that one was a game changer. You're right about that. Because we, I mean, it's my fault, but I have a hard time understanding people sometimes. So about like two or three years ago, I started insisting we watch things with captions. And at Mm -hmm. first you were like annoyed and now you can't. (laughs) Well, I was only annoyed because that was my first job when I moved here was working at a closed (laughs) captioning company. And so it like triggered me for a long time. And now I'm fine. (laughs) And it's helpful. Which we did get confirmation from Dan that you were in fact bad at that job. I was bad at that job. (laughs) I knew it. It's not like that was a surprise to me. (laughs) (laughs) Why were you bad at it? I didn't do it. Oh, because you didn't like it? Uh, no, I hated it, and so I didn't do the work. <laughs> so Dan did the work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't feel good about it. Fair enough. Thank you. Thank you, Dan, for your service. I have grown since then. I miss them. I want to hang out more. Um, uh, also, the fucking in this scene for oh, Amazon like who, who's in it yeah it tells you the character and the name of who's in the scene mm-hmm. they fucking have bonus features oh you can turn on commentaries oh it i didn't know that blew my mind i didn't click on it yet because i couldn't tell if it was for the episode or the series as a whole gotcha okay so i'm going to explore once i've actually finished it but yeah if amazon prime if you keep this up because frankly i mean i've been sleeping on amazon prime cuz didn't they do Electric Dreams or something? Yeah, uh, the Philip K. Dick show. And that one looked good to me. And did they do lore? Uh, that I don't know, but I know they did. They are, or they are doing It's Almost Over, The Man in the High Castle, and I've always wanted to yeah, watch that. Man, I've been sleeping on you, Amazon. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, 
I am. Will and I have started like four different Amazon shows and not finished them. <laughs> so I am enjoying this show. I'm really Good. liking it. The uh, full disclosure, I mostly couldn't give a fuck about Carl Urban's whole plot. Okay. I find myself drifting with him and Frenchie and Mother's Milk. I and- love Frenchie. I mean, he's fine. He's he's an interesting character, but I don't understand what they're doing, and I don't really care. I I mean, I also don't 100% know what they're doing, but I love Frenchie. I think he is such a fun character. Well, the stuff with him and Karen, what is her name? Who's Karen? Uh, Fukuhara. Oh, the, the, they just call her the female. The female? Yeah. Uh, she she was in Suicide Squad. Oh, I okay. I think. I hope I'm not racist. Let me look. No, I think you're right. I think yeah. I read that some more, too. She was Katana in Suicide Squad. Okay. And um, his stuff with her so far is kind of interesting. But yeah, that's the stuff I like. It's moving slow for me. And I mean, I know that they're ostensibly the bad guys, but the soups are what I'm the most interested by. Well, so of course. it's like I'm not, I don't want, you know, Carl Urban to succeed, I guess. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I think. That's correct. <laughs> okay. It just, I, I, I tend to, I zone out a little bit because I had to rewind it a few times. Although his, I took issue with some of the things he said, but his like breakdown of the Spice Girls was hysterical. Hilarious. I know that you like Ginger's albums. That's not the point of this <laughs> endeavor right now. Also, no. Okay. <laughs> because Emma Button released Free Me, which is in my top 20, the Free Me remix mm-hmm. <laughs> songs of all time. But no, it just was so funny because Mother's Milk was even like, how do you know so much about the Spice Girls? I know that was my favorite part of that whole exchange. When he, dro- when he name dropped <laughs> Schizophonic and Scream if you want to go faster. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that was hysterical. It, it's right up there with the other the other guys with the there are three things in this world that I love. <laughs> Kylie oh, Minogue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the dimples above a woman's back <laughs> or on a woman's backside above her butt. I don't remember. But <laughs> but yeah, that was really good. Is it just that you like Frenchie? I like Frenchie a lot. I think his whole thing is like a lot of fun. And I think he just his relationship with the female is really good. I mm-hmm. like their stuff. So a, I'm quite assuming a lot. it keeps going a little bit. A little, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've only watched one further episode, so okay. I, I can't keep speaking to the plot. It's doing this thing that I don't, I don't dislike, but I also <laughs> want. I'm trying to think of how I want to phrase it. The show just sort of is dropping us in. It's presenting us with some of this stuff in a way that I kind of would like a little bit more. And it's not that I want to ease in more. Maybe ease in is what I want. Maybe it's not that I want it spoon fed, but. At times, I'm sort of like, well, who is this? What are they doing? How does this... Like, I find Popclaw... Is that her name? Yeah. I find her interesting in a way that surprised me. I figured I wouldn't like her, and I am. But I'm sort of like, who is she? Because I I can tell she's a soup, and I can tell that at one point she was a bigger deal than she currently is. Yeah, she's like a B-League yeah, what was her fall from grace? Because she's now being, like, pestered by, well, she was being pestered by her landlord Mm -hmm. for money. I mean, I guess if I think about this, like I mentioned earlier, where it's, like, kind of a metaphor for Hollywood, I Mm -hmm. guess maybe she's, like, was once a starlet and is now kind of down on, like, a Lindsay Lohan type a little bit. Uh, that's probably fair. Okay. I was surprised I liked she, maybe it was just the haircut, and I, frankly, I kind of like short hair on, no, I don't, but. No, you don't. I was like, <laughs> why are you lying? I like when, no, I like it sometimes, and I especially, like, I think every woman should have short hair, like, once in her life type of a thing. And I but, did it twice, and I'm done. hmm But I just, I like her more than I thought I would, and I do not like A-Train at all. No, he's awful. He, okay. I don't think you're supposed to. Well, but, I mean, Homelander is awful, and I love him. <laughs> Well, <laughs> Homelander is additionally a little more your aesthetic, and he is also more interestingly awful. Mm-hmm. He's like he's like sociopathic, where A Train is just a narcissist, and it's boring. Yeah, I don't. I, I'm not not into it. No, I know me neither. He's not my favorite at all. That shit with Homelander and Maeve on and the, the plane. The plane, yeah. I was enthralled watching that. I yeah, was it was like, wild. Oh my god. I was like, uh-huh. this is crazy. 
I, you made a comment when we were watching the first episode mm-hmm. where you said you wish they gave Maeve a little bit more material than she's had, and that makes me feel like she's going to have some in the climax. I mean, she must. I mean, she's been she's been a more consistent presence than say like b- Black Noir. <laughs> sure, she's been around, but my issue was that she seems a lot more interesting to me than the show is making her. And, like, the way that she reacted when Starlight was crying in the bathroom and she was like, you can't let them see you like that. Like, grow up and wipe your face off. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's an interesting notion to take the, like, Wonder Woman character. But she also... Go ahead. Well, then, her reaction to the whole plane thing and everything, and then the react when she... They were at A Train's race, and he like had his hand. Homelander had his hand on her neck, and was like, "I don't know what I would do if you found somebody else." And I just was like, "There is more to mine with her." And I think yes, there will be more coming in the later episodes. But I also think since they already got a season two, I think oh they did yeah oh yeah I think oh, they're gonna sweet. focus more on some of the other characters in the season two. Well, and I am wondering. I, I, I am assuming, I believe that it's on the page, but I think the actress is bringing a lot to it. Yeah. Because she's doing she's doing all of this with her face. We're dealing with, with such an embarrassment of riches when it comes mm-hmm. to television in this day and age. And you and I have talked about, I feel like we call it the Schmemmies, which is, that's Kathy Griffin's a bit about like... The, the daytime Emmys? That's what she calls it, but it's yeah. like, we appropriated that, we're using it like, we need like an additional... Emmy show, you know, or for like, I feel like there should be for like well, genre, genre shows, yeah. yeah, because genre doesn't get the respect that it deserves. Because no, not even a little. If bit. you want to see incredible work in every facet of the industry, look at genre television, mm-hmm. and it's like there are so many. Like, there's no excuse whatsoever for the reason why Dylan O'Brien shouldn't have been nominated for like season three of Teen Wolf. Do you know what I mean? Oh, a hundred percent. And I guess there are other award shows because there is a genre award show. What's it called? The Saturn Awards. The Saturn Awards, yeah. So, I mean, I guess they're out there, and maybe you and me should pay more attention to those. I don't think they air them on TV, though. I mean, not yet, but (laughs) they'll release a streaming service. There's real talent on this show, and there's a couple, like, Simon Pegg we know, Mm -hmm. Elizabeth Shue we know, I know, you, you and me know Quaid. Which one? Jack? Jack. Jack Quaid and Aaron Moriarty. Yeah. She's, I fucking love Aaron Moriarty. Yay! She, Me too. Oh, she is something. She she mm, she does things for me. Oh, all right. I was <laughs> yeah. not expecting it to go that direction. Oh yeah, the, the entire bowling alley thing. Oh, so good, right? I, I didn't mean to, to to jump from Maeve so quickly. Well, she hasn't done a lot yet. I'm sure we'll talk about yeah. it more in the next. couple I didn't episodes. mean to jump from her so quickly, but since we got here organically, I'm super into. Huey and I guess her name's Annie. Yeah. And can we talk about what an upgrade <laughs> for him? <laughs> I just I don't like, know, he I, has the ghost of Robin glowering over his shoulder, but you would think that would only solidify how much better Annie was. And <laughs> I just hated her so much. I don't I just hated her so much. I think their little chemistry is so cute and I loved their date and everything. I just think it's really great. I love their whole situation. She's playing she's playing it just right. Yeah. Because she's not being she's not overplaying it. And I feel like so many actresses would be. Mm-hmm. And there's just this like knowing wink. It's kind of like what we this is so weird to say, but it's like I'm into her. It's like in <laughs> Peter Pan, how mother has like the kiss in the side of her lips. Yeah, yeah. It's like she's got a wink in the corner of her eye. And it's it's especially interesting because the character isn't a vixen, you know what I mean? Like typically right. you you see that from a more we'll go with advanced. Like I could <laughs> I could see Maeve leaning into something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Her pretending to not know how to bowl uh yeah that was amazing that whole thing was amazing and him knowing him that calling she was her doing out it, yeah. and the fact that she was like never show your strength to a boy you like uh-huh which is so disgusting the, the straight men of the world have no idea what they're missing well the straight men of the world have no idea how much women shitty straight men of the world not good yeah, of course of, of course but they have no idea how much women are like doing things to spare their feelings Mm -hmm. and i think they'd be even madder if they knew but a powerful woman like is is such an asset in a way that 
you have no idea. It's like, it's the reason why I think the Jonas boys are so great is that's like all their wives are taller than them. Joe, every single like and for me, it's such it's such a status symbol mm-hmm. to see a shorter man with this like. Well, I like shouldn't say Amazon, Amazon that, yeah. yeah, but like Glamazon, like it just it's <laughs> it's like that uh, gif or image of Ed Sheeran at the Victoria's Secret fashion show yeah. where he's laughing. Yeah, yeah. And somebody was finding was like, why were you laughing? And he was like, he was at the finale. And so all the models and Taylor Swift was on stage. Mm -hmm. And he looked around up at them. And he was like, I felt like Frodo in the land of the elves. Yeah. (laughs) Do you know what's hilarious is I've always kind of thought that way that like being being a tall woman was something to aspire to. Like, I wish I'm 5'7 and I wish I were taller. I wish I were 5'10 and I'm above average for a woman. Mm -hmm. You also carry yourself tall, but. Oh, well, thank you. (laughs) <laughs> that was such a nice compliment. No, but I've always felt that way. And I think it a lot of some of it is media, but women are always portrayed as shorter. But one of my favorite instances was when they're not is like relatively early in Gilmore Girls, Lorelai goes out on a date with a really short guy and he's like angry about it the whole time. And when she's she like hears him tell her tell the other guy that she's too tall and so she goes to talk to Luke later and she's like I'm too tall apparently and he's like doesn't he understand how great that is you can reach all the top stuff on the top shelf <laughs> and I so I've always had that in the back of my mind where it's like it's good being tall because you can reach things and you can do stuff and it's nice and I remember when we saw this is we're so far off topic but I don't care this is interesting but when we saw Widows and it like Elizabeth Debicki was on screen Ugh. and people kind of laughed and I was like, she's no. exquisite. What are you talking about? Exquisitely beautiful. She's also taller than most she, men I've she's ever six met. Three. She's 6'3". Yeah. She's 6'3". It's insane. And she's stunning. And I just, I, ugh. I no, was I, just, they put that on HBO. They put Widows on HBO. And I just, I got so mad yesterday and I was like, if you don't think she deserved a Best Supporting Actress nomination, I don't, <laughs> you can't sit with us. You can't sit with us! That movie deserved three nominations, but... At least. Yeah, but no, I just, I remember this time in high school, I think I was in like 10th grade, and we were sitting down at lunch, and some kid, Josh, who I'm actually friends with now, that happened with a lot of my bullies, though. Yep, yeah. (laughs) I forgot what he did. He did something like truly dickish to me, and when he turned his head, I I flipped him off, and kind of, it was like happening at the same time. Uh Uh-huh. And his friend saw and pointed it out to him. And so he, like, got in my face. And I remember it was, like, Jackie and Gabby and, like, a couple of the girls immediately were like, whoa, you want to, you, you know, you got something to say? <laughs> and he was just like, you're going to let the girls fight your fight for you? And I was like, I mean, it's worked for me so far. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> it was like. <laughs> why, why would I not? They'll decimate you worse than I would. <laughs> so anyways, yeah, I just, because I've been struggling a little bit with Jack Quaid for no real reason. He just, I, I guess because I'm not really sold on this whole Robin thing. Exactly. That's the problem where, like, I really like his emotional journey of, like, accepting what the soups are and everything and realizing that they're not all terrible and, like, A-Train is definitely shitty, but, like, uh, things are gonna are bound to happen in the course of duty or whatever. But his, his like, initial motivation of being that upset about Robin does not track for me because she was just <laughs> awful. I mean, I think that on both of our parts, especially yours, I think that's more of like a personal assessment. I uh, Yes, of course. Presumably <laughs> they had a loving, beautiful relationship, but she was too much. I guess I said what I wanted to, that I, I am really into their whole thing. And and you know, Starlight, I, I never I never wasn't interested in her, but she felt very standard initially and i mean she is very standard in a way that i think aaron is really bringing a lot out of a character that yeah. could be fairly safe definitely i did mention that i wasn't quite done with mave and you said we'd come back to her and i was just going to say that uh the the insinuation is that she dated homelander and then they broke up and i do find it interesting you know we talk a lot about male female dynamics i do find it interesting that the two women at least the two soups because elizabeth shoe is pretty pretty bad but the two women are slightly more complicated than the boys are yeah morally so i wish that that scene with Deep and Starlight didn't happen the way that it did because I really like Deep and I'm I'm just sort of I don't know 
I feel like if it happened six years ago, I wouldn't really care. Yeah. Although that's part of the problem, but. No, I know. I And I agree with you. I think, so Will, I was rewatching these episodes this morning and Will came out to the living room and he was like, oh, he, cause it was the scene with him and the dolphin mm-hmm. in the truck or I mean, no, maybe it was when he was in therapy, but regardless, he was like, I think he must have something more coming in the back half of this season mm-hmm. because they you know he's like not a thing and i was like the the thing the problem with him is that they really came out of the gate super strong and weird with that coerced blowjob but he really is he seems like such a sweet natured dummy like it seems out of character for him to have done that well it's kicking the dog to an effect it's like yeah. he's kind of feels powerless and pathetic and stuff and so he's going to reclaim that mm-hmm. by exerting his power on a weaker uh, it, within that circumstance a weaker sure. person and it's like i just wish it wasn't sexual manipulation but yeah. it is what it is and frankly i mean i i would be surprised if this is where they're going but you know good men can do bad things and yeah and i think well i mean i think that's very well illustrated when he's trying to rescue that dolphin (laughs) i like i laughed so hard it didn't get me it didn't get me that much because i realized after the fact that i had already seen that oh okay when i came home one of the days i saw the dolphin get hit by the truck right okay so i was like oh that's what this is but i will say the moment that did make it brilliant for me was how we cut from that like monologue that di- that dissertation mm-hmm. that butcher gave about the spice girls to the deep rescuing this dolphin listening to the spice girls yeah uh-huh. and that says so much about him that he secretly loves pop music there's so much about it. it this is a this is a show that like actually is operating on really really deep levels <laughs> For how well, and it, was, it, is. it was in particular the slow motion shot of the dolphin flying through the window with the <laughs> friendship never ends. And you know, that I was told, the part I told that really. I was like, the scene is just like the opening scene in Meet Joe Black. And he was like, I don't think I've ever seen that. And I was like, Are you shitting me? <laughs> so I found it for him and played it when uh-huh. Brad Pitt gets ping ponged between cars. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And he was like, oh, yeah, that is a lot like it. And I just it's so oh, my God, it made me laugh so hard. Poor dolphin, though. <laughs> she, <laughs> she wanted to kinda, like, run away with him. She seemed kind of slutty. I yeah, don't know. You know, I'm going to slut shame I just, this I don't dolphin. Know why. I just assumed it was a male dolphin. <laughs> oh, no, it was a girl. <laughs> That's fair. I just assumed. The, yeah, deep doesn't. Homelander, maybe, <laughs> but deep, no. <laughs> oh, man. There was that race. I don't know. A train's all. A train one. Vamped yeah. up. Well, wasn't it called V? Wasn't the drug called V on True Blood as well? Well, it wasn't the drug. Oh wait, no. Yes, it was. Yes, you're right. It, <laughs> but it was just the blood. But yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 God. Anthony Starr as Homelander. That so that rousing good. monologue he gave on the uh-huh. beach with the wreckage. Uh huh. Just horrifying, right? Just like the the implications, just the most horrifying. Yeah. Oh God. Oh, but man. so good and so interesting. That's the thing is like when we when we started the show and it and it did come out of the gate with the rape warning and everything. I was like, oh, I was like, this is not what I wanted out of this. But it like the the more of it I've watched, and now the second time I'm watching it, it's very it's a lot more nuanced than I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. At first glance. So, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I, I'm excited to see what's coming next, because I've seen the next episode, but that's it. So I've got three episodes I haven't seen yet. Okay. Well, so are we good for now? I mean, did we cover what we needed to? I think for the moment, yeah. Cool. Okay. Well, uh, let's go watch it now. Okie doke. Bye. We were just catching up. We're apart right now, and we were talking yeah. about all the wonderful news that's happening in the world right now. Yeah, what is it, August 10th? So yeah. just think back to what happened August 10th and you'll know what we were talking about. Well, I, I had a bit of, you're right, we are in the middle of this. We do not need an intro, but I had a bit prepared because I would, had told you that I got new earphones and I was like, I don't have to change our settings. And you were like, as long as they don't have a microphone. And I was going to be like, they don't because they're AirPods. Ew, gross. They're knockoffs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that was the punchline. That's what the punchline was going to be. They're like thirty dollars okay. knockoffs. That's funny. <laughs> but they work. They work. They work pretty good. I'm. I'm excited. Like seven dudes in my office have AirPods, and all they do is walk around with them in their ears. And I'm like, you look stupid. <laughs> I'm actually stupid. so excited because they they do fit in my ear because well, I have a, a strange shaped. What is that part of your ear called? Ear Tunnel? canal. Canal. There you go. Canal. <laughs> the, the, the levy of your ear. <laughs> <laughs> Drove my AirPods to the ear levy. <laughs> There's something there. I didn't have a lot of time to work with no, it. No, it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> I did not revisit these two episodes. I meant to. I watched them like three or four days, ago, probably a week ago. What is time? Oh, shit. It's yeah, not real. I know time? that much. <laughs> So this is going to be especially sloppy, but the show's sloppy, so I think it'll work. I think I'll be fine. So it was five and six, correct? Correct. And it was the Christian episode and mm-hmm. then the aftermath. I guess, starting off, pour one out for Popclaw. Yeah. And her, and her, <laughs> her heroin overdose. <laughs> Quote, In our previous coverage, you were listening to me being like, I really like her. I'm, I'm excited to know more about her, but... Mm. Well, we kind of did. This this show is doing that thing that I ultimately like. I find it a little bit of fr- a little bit frustrating in the moment, but it answers your questions like two beats after you ask them. Yeah. Because I was sort of like I don't understand Popclaw and Adrian's relationship. Like I don't know what's happening here. Mm-hmm. And then the episode after she dies, it's like, "Oh, they were in the Mickey Mouse Club together," quote yeah. unquote. <laughs> And so I was like, that makes so much more sense. And I knew that there was like more than just the seven, but it's like, even within the soups, there's like a hierarchy. Yeah. And I want to give a round of applause to the little cameos in episode six, because they were, they were funny. They were good. And I think that everybody involved was good sports. It was Billy Zane, Tara Reid. I mean, Haley Joel Osment. I didn't notice Tara Reid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was there. Was she herself or was she a superhero? Superhero. Okay, because Billy and Zane was himself. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was in the Popclaw movie. He was the yeah. villain. Mm-hmm. I noticed that the like episode before, but and then Haley Joel, Joel Osment was just a character, and as of now, still alive. Yes, I. I thought for sure I he was going it. off that building. I did too. Mm-hmm. Either that or getting like sliced with Homelander's laser eyes. Hmm. But I loved it. I I. I'm such a fan of Haley Joel Osment and what he's done with his career in like the last five years. <laughs> yeah, I'm like proud of him. He's kicking. He's doing stuff. Yep, me too. And it's it's fun. And it like what was his his name? Mesmer. Yeah, I'm really into it. I'm like really into the superhero world. Um, well, I liked his TV show, The Mesmerizer, definitely produced by Dick Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> So we went to that little, well, it wasn't little, that like huge Christian convention. Yeah. It was appropriately gross. Mm -hmm. Although I do honestly appreciate that the show itself at least entertained the conversation. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I think the show hasn't come down one way or the other on like the platonic ideal of religion, but I think. Or a higher power. Yeah. Or a higher power. But I think it makes a good case that these type of things are gross. Well, yeah, absolutely. And very real. And I I liked, I I really liked how all the characters sort of dealt with it. Because, you know, we got Butcher. I can never remember. I was like Carl Urban. (laughs) It's not that I don't like him. I just don't like him. Does that make sense? The character? Yeah, I'm just sort of like, whatever. And Well, okay, here's the thing. I do like him, but... I understand because he's definitely one of those guys. Like he's got such a fish and chips on his shoulders. Mm-hmm. But once you find out more about why he's a it Frank makes Miller sense, character, though, it's like it. Uh, I mean, I, okay. Homelander raped his wife and she disappeared, and so she's not dead. You don't think so? Oh no, I think she's okay. like she's certainly alive. My guess is she's either super or evil in some capacity. Mm, but interesting, interesting. I mean, maybe she got pregnant. I don't know. But she's not dead. The, we wouldn't establish that. And fucking we forgot to mention our favorite 
uh, fuck, Britt Morgan is her sister. Oh, yeah. Debbie Pell. <laughs> they, they killed my cooter. <laughs> Getting her fingers in all of the pots. <laughs> yeah, she is. Yeah. She was. I liked her better in this because she was like a real human person. She's not like fucking Penny from Riverdale, like, and she like Penny. At I this know point. you like Penny, <laughs> but she's just such a caricature all the time. Like Debbie Pelt is a caricature, and Penny uh-huh. is a caricature. This was like a real human person, and yeah, I was I like, know. "Hey, look, Brett Morgan can act." How is Anna Camp not on this show? Ooh, that's what I want to know. Maybe next season. God, could you imagine? Maybe, if she was maybe in she's Lamplighter. <laughs> So, yeah, but back to the whole, well, we we went there, so I'll make sure that was clear. Uh, Butcher had a wife who was Mm -hmm. raped by Homelander. Yes. I mean, I'm sure they'll explain. I don't. How we know that. Yeah, Yeah. I don't don't know. But, and then she disappeared and everyone assumes she's dead. And so that's, so he wants revenge because, and and it's, it's rightfully so. And no, also, I mean, yes, I, I agree with the like vengeance or whatever, but I, there's a single mindedness to Butcher that is like there. It's very black and white for him. There's no shades of gray, and as always, there are shades of gray because which is what Huey is demonstrating by like getting involved with uh, Starlight because she's nice. Annie's nice. I mean, okay, I'll say so far because I was watching it earlier and I was like, what? Which way is this going to go? Because I I could see her either becoming like undercover and working with the boys from within the seven, but I could also see something terrible happening and her getting sucked harder under in Devot. Uh I So think I don't know. That second one I think would happen before the first one. Okay. I'm we we have a second season coming. Do you know I guess you don't know much about the comic book. No, I don't know anything. I did I I even today was asking Will again because I had forgotten. I was like, this is based on a comic book, right? And he was like, I don't know. I, I thought it, it was. I think it, it is. is. I looked it but up. But I it was going to say, is it just, is it a novel or is it an ongoing series? Oh, I have no idea. Because it's that a would novel, be that implies that there's a, an end. An end, yeah. So uh, I would imagine that was the impression I was getting. And so some of these more ambitious shows I feel like are better as, you know, shorter three season shows. Sure. Typically, the dream is when you like a show that it'll go for a while and hopefully not outstay its welcome. But I'd have to see because I also wonder what the turnover is going to be like for this show. I don't know that as much as I'm enjoying it. I don't know that I'm really going to be chomping for it two years from now. Yeah, I agree with you. So if they can churn it out quicker, then I feel like the better for it. Yeah, like if season two comes out in like January. Or even maybe not that soon, like March. Yeah, or even just summer of next year. But it's like if we go into the eighteen months, I'm gonna start being like, because there's people in it, but mm-hmm. there, there's actually a, a fair amount of people in it. But it's not like Nicole Kidman and Reese Witherspoon. Yeah. You know what none I mean? Of them, none of them are like busy. <laughs> mm-hmm. So the Christian convention, it just was really interesting because we had, and I wasn't surprised. And I really like. Are they calling? I can't remember. Are they calling him Mother's Milk? We didn't. He said that was his name, like his actual name. Name. Yeah, the guy with Butcher. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He. I. So far, he's my favorite of them. I know you like Frenchie. <laughs> I do love Frenchie. No, I like Mother's Milk. He's the most reasonable. Frenchie's well, kind sure, of, of course. <laughs> Kind of messy. I mean, Fr- Fr- Frenchie feels like he is like has like just decided to get clean and is like coming down mm-hmm. from heroin or something. <laughs> but I like him so much, and I love his relationship with uh, what did they decide to call her, Kamiko? Yeah. They've been am I right, or am I or am I thinking about that episode of Thirty Rock? It was something along those lines. <laughs> okay. And it's not a name that's in our vernacular everyday vernacular so it's okay if you don't quite remember it (laughs) all all i can think about now is james franco with that japanese pillow your hand feels like a pillow that's been in the microwave (laughs) it was they were calling her the female and then it was something with a k i remember that but yeah i and i only just now thought that i was like shit something's gonna happen with his other girlfriend and my guess oh. is <laughs> Kamiko's going to kill her. <laughs> oh, that could be. That could definitely be. I had totally, even just rewatching it this morning, I had forgotten about his other girlfriend. Mm-hmm. It, I but just yeah, thought he, about he it. He does have a girlfriend. Well, is she a girlfriend or is she like a partner? Uh, I mean, I, th- I I had the feeling that she was one of several and even oh, okay. Okay. The, the primary. But yeah, I really liked him. And 
I am still really enjoying a lot this thing with Huey and Starlight and Annie, mm -hmm. but this is one of my least favorite tropes ever, and it's the guy that has to get close to the girl so he deceives her, but then starts to have real feelings for her, and it's like, yeah, I'm I'm so curious to see if we're gonna lean hard into that trope, which I roll, or if they're gonna find a way to subvert it, which this feels like that kind of show. So I'm hoping I would love if they found a way to subvert it because that I think is the way into Annie becoming one of the the boys quote unquote mm -hmm. if if she's like oh no i'm all in let me help she's like i mean i'm pissed you lied oh, to me but like they let me the help boys yeah mm -hmm. oh. yeah Carl Urban and, yeah they are the boys i was like considering that there are three very dynamic women involved in vought i was like why are mm -hmm. they calling this the boys okay I no, got yeah, it. They're not the boys. <laughs> <laughs> got it. I got it. Okay. I'm like, although the party it doesn't sometimes. really work no matter what, because now the boys have the female and I want it. I want them to have it. Annie. It makes more sense though. I, I, the I know, boys does, are, yeah, yeah, I get it now. It was, that was so strange to me. And now I was like, cause there was some hubbub on Twitter about there's like four different properties out there right now whose name is some iteration of the boys and it's all about like you know boys being bad and boys will be mm. boys and people were getting real eye rolly with it and i was like that's unfortunate i was like because this show is tackling most of that stuff yeah definitely and i hope that it's title you know kind of like crazy ex-girlfriend it's like i hope it doesn't turn people away from sure from what it actually is uh, like even, what's the what's the other one that we liked so much that had oh cougar town mm -hmm. oh <laughs> yeah yeah because I even watched the trailer for this. I I had not seen anything before when I other than the ads on Fire, Amazon Fire. Mm -hmm. And so I watched the trailer out of curiosity after I'd finished episode uh, five or six, rather. And I don't think it sells the show all that well. <sighs> they really focus on the like violence and the like darkness of it, which I mean, there's tons of that. But yeah, but it's I, hilarious. I, well, and they're trying to sell this like it's a man's show. And it's like, I guess N uh, it's yeah. a little bit more a dude show. But it's kind of like when we were watching Glow and I was like, who exactly is the audience? For, especially like season one. It, it yeah. really sort of like you would think a show about like those eight women would be a chick, like a total chick show. And it's like not necessarily. Yeah, I agree. Because like Will's enjoying it to the best of my knowledge. But like I was cackling in episode six with all of the stuff about the deep just losing my shit i d i couldn't tell you 100 percent why chase crawford is doing so much his apology it was the cringiest it like but but hilarious i mean that he couldn't even get through it <laughs> it just it felt too real to me no way too real but then like when whoever is like <laughs> whoever drive first of all okay he's driving a hummer which is like the most hilarious visual gag after he's been like the environmentalist one mm -hmm. the whole time and i was like well, that's solid and it's also one of those fucking little dick yellow hummers too well, and also hummer is a slang term for like exactly. blowjob so <laughs> And then somebody threw, like, a rock through his window or whatever, and he literally just, like, I, because here's the thing. I feel like there, I feel like there's a part of him that, like, is trying yeah. to, like, be good now. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, he's so put out about it where they, like, throw the, the rock into his window and they're driving away and he just is like, I support all women. I just, like, I couldn't handle it. It was so hilarious to me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll see. I, I'm there with you. It, it just, doesn't sound like you are. No, I am. It's just like, because of who I am, I, I'm very aware that it's like, because I love Chase Crawford from Gossip Girl. So it's like, mm -hmm. I'm, I've said this several times on the show that I'm a good compartmentalizer. And so for me, it's sort of like, oh, the character that like, or harassed and assaulted Starlight in the first episode is a different person. And it's not. No, no, you no, know no, what no, I no. mean? No. No, I'm not going there. I'm just thinking, I I think the whole, the way they're handling no, it, the it whole is. arc of his story, it's hysterical. And the fact that it appears he has done this to Maeve and probably every other woman who's gone through the seven. 
at least. Yeah, I just feel like we're we're going to redeem him, which, again, I'm, I'm I'm fine with. But it's like it's just it it's it's well, it's it's messy tricky territory yeah. and i mean this kind of stuff is i'm not even arguing that he should be redeemed or mm-hmm. that i'm gonna i mean i won't forget he did that but it well, the, he's still so, the whole thing he's still so likable is hilarious. Is the thing yeah but well, yeah he's in a chase crawford shaped package mm-hmm. with those arms well, yeah and i also agree likeable. with you that it's like he i don't think he ever actually considered what he was doing and and it's also no. just really pathetic like it's so p- pathetic is exactly the word i couldn't get my brain to he's mm-hmm. so pathetic and it, it that is what's so funny to me is how pathetic he is and how like he thought he thought and we thought and starlight thought that he had all this like grand power and stuff and he is literally the lowest man on the totem pole mm-hmm. like elizabeth shoe can't even work up to get angry at him like she's angry at starlight it's mm-hmm. just it's, it's just so sad and gross it's mm-hmm. just hilarious i don't uh, his, outside of like the main stuff, his stuff is what makes me laugh the most no, every I, time. I, I, I do agree. The, the, one of the points that I had been trying to get to was that the back at the convention, I thought it was really interesting seeing it through Starlight's eyes because she mm. has presumably been doing this her whole life. Yeah. She's from where is she from? Omaha? Iowa. Iowa. I think. And so it's like somewhere this in is, the middle. Yeah. This is something. That she grew up with, and it's like she never actually thought about it. Like she never gave it an objective thought. And then mm-hmm. now that she's been out of, you know, the country and in the city for a short amount of time, but she's had her eyes opened quite a deal. And going back into this little bubble, suddenly things are not the way she remembers them, you know. And certainly, yeah, it doesn't fit anymore. I think she could have done a. I couldn't decide. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't decide if I was on her side, bottoming out the way she did then and there. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I want to say if you're going to bottom out that way, you could at least try to be a little bit more eloquent about it. But mm-hmm. I mean, I think there was like no time to really prepare or anything. And I, but I will say, who was eloquent? Was, was Homelander? Huey. Oh, Huey. No, <laughs> no, Huey uh, confronting Ezekiel. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Didn't I'm he kidding, just scream, obviously. you fucked me? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but then he kept going and he was like, you wrapped your stretchy arms around me. And he was like, and your, your dick so stretchy. <laughs> and he was like, you played my butt like jazz. And I'm just like, I, Jack Quaid is really, because I'm with you. I was like, he's not as good looking as his dad. But then it's like, the more we get well, into this, I'm like, he's here. so cute. <laughs> Well, it's true, but he's so cute. I can't stand it. And that whole scene where he's confronting him and his phone won't turn on because he just got forcefully baptized. Which that whole time I was like, they are in their clothes. I was like, typically you change into a robe. I was like, that feels counterproductive. And then I was like, oh, okay, we needed a plot contrivance. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then what is actually happening with Ezekiel? At the moment, nothing or? At the moment, nothing. They're kind of... The boys are kind of like throwing whatever at the wall and seeing what sticks because they're trying to get to the bottom of the compound V stuff because I feel like... (laughs) Right. Yeah. I feel like Butcher thinks that that has something to do with Becca, with his wife. And so they're basically they're trying to take down the soups because if they get into the military, then it's like game over, essentially. Yeah. Well, and didn't they? Because then they can't be held accountable for anything. Well, and that's the, bringing the other two parts of the the episodes that we're covering together. Th- there were two more reveals, and it is that the soups are being engineered, like manufactured. Yes. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. the second part, as, like as babies. Yeah. And the second part is somebody is also making or attempting to make a super villain in order to get the soups into the military, which is the female. Is- yeah. Is that and I was going to say it also appears that Homelander is the only one who knows he wasn't born that way. Why? Because he remembers being in the room. Right, That's right, why he didn't right. want his blanket right, in right, the right, thing. Right. But so, like Starlight truly believes she was like chosen well, by God or well, whatever. One of my questions was that. So we have evidence that they have at the very least made one baby, I guess, two, counting Homelander's memory. That Mm -hmm. at the very least, two babies have been engineered. But that does not mean that every single soup 
was. I mean, we're led yeah, to believe I, that. I don't I don't know, but weren't they in like a whole nursery full of babies? They were, they were, but I guess my point is that I still believe on a show like this that there could be naturally occurring soups. I mean, that's certainly a possibility. Because the female, the Kamiko, was kidnapped by a terrorist organization. Mm-hmm. So then where did she get her power from? I think she, I, okay, so she escaped from the terrorists and left her brother there. And then I think she must have been kidnapped again by Vought. And got powers then? And was injected with the shit, yeah. Okay. That's what I was taking from it. It could be something totally different. Okay. I'm just saying I would not be surprised to find out that there also could be soups being birthed, like, so, so a twist No, like totally. That. I'm sure, yeah. So, I think that covers the stuff. Uh, Starlight has gone a little bit rogue. She got real mouthy with Elizabeth Shue. What is her name? Mal- Ma- um, Madeline? Madeline. No. No. Yeah. That's Big Little Lies. <laughs> she, we're so bad at this. Valerie? Uh, no, Madeline. Okay, Madeline. Still well, yeah. I don't know what her end game is what her plan is and i don't know if she has a plan i don't know either but she is playing fast and loose with homelander and i think she's gonna get lasers to the face at some point well she can laser back but what starlight i mean she can no madeline oh madeline madeline i was talking about starlight but yeah oh sorry uh yeah oh god yeah i have no idea what's going on there but (laughs) no i was talking about starlight that I said, I don't know what she's playing it. Like, I don't know what her end game is because she got real mouthy. Sure. Okay. And we do have Queen Maeve is a lesbian. And that appears to be. She's at least bisexual. That, that appears to because be she's, on the yeah. DL. And because she's being interviewed yeah. by Melrose from. Yeah. <laughs> from Glow. <laughs> I noticed that too. I think that's good for now. We went longer than I thought we were going to for this middle catch up. (laughs) This middle chunk. A lot happened and there's only one more. So two or that I mean, like one more recording for us. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two episodes. Very excited. I got to work on finishing my thoughts. And that's a problem I've had since the beginning of doing this podcast with you. And I feel like Mm -hmm. for a while I was doing okay. And then I fell off that horse and some of our recent (laughs) stuff I was listening to. And I was like, I am not finishing any of my thoughts. <laughs> well, let's all make a point. Yeah. Well, because you can typically tell what I'm saying. So, yeah. I just think. I try. Had a lot going on. It's been a cruel, cruel summer. Cruel. <laughs> Play us out with cruel summer. <laughs> I think that's good for now. Okay. Well, we'll check back in after the last two. Mm-hmm. All right. Bye. So, before we start. I need to say that I've seen your new Twitter handle. (laughs) I was on the fence about it. I thought it might have been too much. (laughs) I mean, it is, but it's fine. (laughs) The first one I was just going to say was the deep has gills. (laughs) (laughs) I was, I'm glad we're starting there, actually. I really am. Okay. I was shocked. I don't know why. the gills? Yeah, I don't know how I didn't see it coming. That whole scene. I just, and I also have to like weirdly credit Sade for that. She put the word shocked back into my lexicon because she'll use it a oh, lot. Yeah. And I just, I love when you rediscover, like, it's not even like an old word, but it's like, I think when you're growing up, this is such a weird tangent to be going on, but it's like, you forget that some of the, some of the standard words that you learn actually are kind of are powerful. Still good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> like, I mean, have you ever actually just called somebody mean? They'd be like, what? <laughs> Like, whoa, like a fuck twat, <laughs> maybe, but mean. <laughs> like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, sometimes less is yeah. more. Definitely. But um, yeah, so when that scene was happening, I was shocked. I was like, n- no, <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. Because you know how I, I weirdly come down hard on that issue where it's like, even though he's not a mermaid, I'm like, mermaids are mammals. I was like, so they wouldn't yeah. have gills in my mind. I was like, they have belly buttons, okay. they have live birth, and I gotta be honest, I was impressed. I liked, the, I, I thought the design was cool. I'm having a hard time yeah. finding pictures. It was <laughs> the first thing I did. I might have even paused. 
You don't say. To see if I could find you. <laughs> I'm like a little annoyed that you are so not like phased at all by me being weirdly into this. <laughs> are you kidding me? The moment, the literal moment he took his vest off, I was like, Will's going to be into this. <laughs> The literal moment. <laughs> there was not even a pause before you were like, I said anything. You were like, oh God, Will's gonna like drill this into the ground. I like, literally, I was like, we're not gonna be able to escape Will talking our ears off about these gills <laughs> on Chase Crawford and for we, weeks. We got him again, and like, <laughs> it's so weird. And I just, I love when a moment happens because this was a fairly, you know graphic shocking television show there was a lot of violence there was a lot of sex there was a lot of language stuff like that and i love mm -hmm. and i also feel rather desensitized to a lot of things but i love those moments where i can truly be caught off guard by something yeah. and i read an interview where he was like it's the most uncomfortable i've ever been he was like i couldn't get out of there fast enough when the scene was over Oh, Chase, like <laughs> and when he, he when his gills are getting fingered, well, just the whole scene. I mean, because he he got raped back and no, I know I'm aware that, like, OK, I was being a little bit sensitive earlier. And it's like sometimes I'm very aware that we're recording ourselves and I just want <laughs> to I want to do I want to be right and I want to do good things. Right. Like, I don't want to put bad stuff out there. And then other times I'm like, actually, you want to know what's kind of funny <laughs> like when a rapist gets raped back <laughs> i mean not a hundred percent no and so that scene was just so and his like performance well, it was very vindicating yeah his performance because he was so it it wasn't super like she it she was assaulting him but it's like she wasn't like comically beating him up like they didn't go too far but right. he had just been so depowered and so yeah. objectified in this way that was and, and I think that's it I think it's how it made him feel like right. it made him feel so utterly violated the part that I, and th this is we can and come back to this Ohio. but in fucking Ohio yeah in Sandusky Ohio <laughs> But the thing that was so hilarious to me is that Will turned to me and he goes, how did that girl realize she had this kink in the first place? You know. You just know that you, you want to finger know. somebody's gills? I mean, I've never woken <laughs> up being like, I'm going to do that. But in the, if I were in this alternate reality. In the moment? Okay. No, I mean, if I were... I mean, it wouldn't be the first place I'd go. I'd go for wings first. I'd be like, I'm going to find me an angel. And then sure. it's, I feel like she'd been, she's a groupie. Like she was working her way down. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. But it seemed, it seemed like nobody was sure he had gills. Like when she confirmed it, it she seemed surprised. Yeah. I like that. I the, There was a fair amount of world building in this show that they, yeah. they did a lot with a little. And mm -hmm. um, I mentioned earlier that it was kind of like, it had that quality where it would lay some things down at first. And I'd be like, I don't know that that entirely makes sense. And then, you know, in the next scene or even sometimes the next episode, they'd like clarify it. You'd be like, oh, okay, cool. I get how this is bigger yeah. than what I was realizing. But yeah, I mean, I kind of like that that's maybe a rumor or that it's like a taboo. And mm -hmm. it just, because I mean, there is a point where it was like as much of, as I was into it, I was like, does he ever take that fucking suit off? Like we never. Me too. I was like, <laughs> he's in the, he was trying to type his memoir entitled Deeper a memoir and then he was like in the grocery store and he still had his gloves on the whole time and i was like dude I was like, get it's, a t-shirt it's gotta be ripe like <laughs> <laughs> i just like yeah and I, I saw that you laughed at the lobster thing and i saw that coming a mile away i was like oh my god i was like they're gonna yeah i literally was like they're gonna stab the lot i wanted to know what was happening and it was just he was just i know so me too <laughs> He was like, I'll help you. It's fine. Yeah, let's go. Let's get out of here. And he was so, like, conspiratorial about mm -hmm. it. And then it's like, I honestly, uh, yes, he's, like, a bad guy. And he has gotten some comeuppance. But I actually have such a lot of sympathy for him. Because he does have one of the dumber powers. Well, and that's the thing. is, Like I said, I was, like, I, I was very confused to start to start a show, a, a show, a scene, and a character arc off that way is, is bold. Yeah. I read an interview in between while this was happening. Cause like I said, he was like, that's the most uncomfortable I've ever been filming a scene. Mm -hmm. And he was like, I'm not trying to excuse him or his behavior, but it's that thing that we've talked about where it's like, 
to a large extent, that's how the world has just operated for him. Like, he's never thought yeah. about it from other people's perspective. That doesn't negate what he did, but I think, I mean, I think I might have even said, like, you know, good people can do bad things and vice versa. And so it's like... Well, it's also the thing you've said before where it's not an excuse, it's an explanation. Yeah. Yeah, that's one of where, my like, favorites. It doesn't, ex- yeah. it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't excuse the behavior, but it does explain where it came why from. and how he feels that way. Mm-hmm. And, despite how wrong it is. And it does appear that, I mean, at the very least, he is capable of growth. I mean, he's bottoming out pretty hard. So I gotta say. Yeah, as our friend Yeti explained, he is full 2000 Brit- 2007 Britney. Yeah, I gotta say, everybody, Yeti, he works for the company that made all their costumes, like all of their superhero suits. Yeah. And they make all kinds of props and prosthetics and costume. I think it's, is it mostly costume pieces? He told me. and then I, I'm not sure. Yeah. But it was like on three separate occasions, he had spoiled something from the show before I got there. But I just mm. assumed it was him. It was Yeti being Yeti. And so because he even said, though, oh. when he goes all 2007 Britney and I was like, yeah, I mean, he was kind of sad. I guess that's how you could phrase that. And then, and then he then, shaved his whole body. I was like, I was I was really <laughs> triggered by by that. I was like, but then when he went straight for the head, I was like, OK, whatever. He's completely yeah. bottoming out. But yeah. it was so weird. It's so weird. And I think that's, I think that sufficiently takes care of the deep and his gills for now. There are places to for go now. for a second season. I am very, very intrigued. Uh, Me too. I guess cutting all the way to the end, I am. Yeah. The cutting m- all the way to the end. Yeah. Which which part? Because I are you are we going to the same part? I think part? what you're about to say. I'm like I'm I've downgraded it from earlier, but I'm like maybe twenty five percent less interested in season two now. There was a part of me where I felt like Homelander, where I, when he was like, "What's your plan, Butcher?" Mm-hmm. And I was sort of like, "But Homelander, what's your plan?" I was like, "Where? Yeah. How is this scene gonna unfold?" Mm-hmm. And I was really like gambling with the show, where I was like, "I don't want an Elizabeth Shoeless second season." Same. And I will say, this is the kind of show where Stranger Things have happened. I mean, they could have her brain sure. in like a yeah. tank somewhere or something, but it like. I'm all for bold, I'm all for shaking a show up and bold directions and stuff like that. And even, you know, sometimes people come and go, whatever. But I just didn't feel like we were quite finished with her. No, and I was for sure not done with their Electra Complex situation. Oh, yeah, no, no, no. And not even remotely done with that. She just was so dynamic. And it was... I just also have loved Elizabeth Shue for, like, most of my life. Well, she's one of the ones that kind of disappeared for a hot minute, right? For a little bit, but I also, I think I mentioned this on one of the episodes we had Tim on for, but my favorite Tom Cruise movie is Cocktail, Mm -hmm. unironically, and she is the female lead in that, and so I have liked her for so long. Like, since the first time I saw that movie, I just think she's so great in general. Well, she looks amazing, and this is just such a... Yeah. It it was such an interesting role, and especially, I mean, because of what is she, like, 56 now? It's like... Yeah. Men get to play these roles all the time, and we're getting to a place where women are playing them more frequently, but it, like, you know, there was a point where, you know, considering that this is a show about the boys, you know, there's a scene where her and Jennifer Esposito are kind of having a little showdown, and I was like... Oh, so good. I love Jennifer Esposito. (laughs) Do you know what that scene reminded me of? Is that scene in the first season of The Punisher with Karen (laughs) and Madani? (laughs) That's what it reminded me of a lot, where they, like, both know the score, and they're trying to get the other one to break first. It's amazing. (laughs) (laughs) I really did like this show. And in all honesty, a handful of places, it tried my patience. And I I guess it's because I I wasn't, you know, 100% in on the the boys part of it. But Mm -hmm. this is one that I have thoroughly enjoyed watching two episodes, you know, at a time over two weeks. Yeah, me too. And... I want more, and I, I, I'm glad that we are most likely getting more. I'm glad that we... Because that was the other thing, is I didn't really want to lose anybody. Like, even... Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess A-Train is a character I'm the least interested in, but then by the very end, I was like, okay, this is like when he finally admitted that he did kill Popclaw. Yeah, he... You know, that's the thing, is he kept on being like, you killed my girlfriend, and I was like, bitch, you were there. <laughs> you put the needles in her. What are you talking about? And I was like, Huey was not in the Bahamas at the time. And I love that they kind of did what we asked for, where it was like, when we last talked, 
we were dealing with that awful trope of like two people dating that started with ulterior motives but has moved past mm-hmm. that and yeah. true to f- or, or sure enough not true to form actually the opposite of that we got th- we navigated through that fairly easily uh, but it also yeah. it also felt real like it felt true it didn't feel like she was like that's okay like i don't know it just she no, was- she's she was she was in my opinion mad enough and she left him in the lurch until she realized that she was not righter than him. But she was and then also, she came in in the clutch. She was also reasonable because in so many of those things, people are like, you have betrayed my trust. And I'm exactly. like, people do not have that kind of conviction. I was like, right. <laughs> I mean, do you know how many times people go back to things they know are bad for them? Like, <laughs> Oh, yeah, so much. So much. I was really impressed with how sprawling this show the world and and even the story kind of was and that they did manage to contain it in these eight hours and and with these sets and these scenes and stuff like this was a nice looking show like this was a very yeah it had like a really fun like almost sepia sheen over the whole thing that like a little bit the the snyder like well i was i was literally going to say those words except for i was going to say it's like if the snyder verse was better yeah i i think it, they were trying to evoke that but but they did it right <laughs> <laughs> on a way lower budget i i i'm also just so glad that we still have homelander i love him so much <laughs> Look, I'm telling you, he, in my opinion, so this, I don't, I don't know if it's going to be on like my top list at the end of the year, but I did enjoy it a lot, but he is absolutely one of the most interesting characters this year so far. Mm -hmm. Like literally fascinating. And the, and the actor too, I can't get over how good he was at portraying the like sort almost like simperingly patriotic (laughs) figure while having literally nothing behind the eyes. I loved the running. No, you're the hero. (laughs) Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, Everything about it was so, so, so fascinating. Mm -hmm. I can so clearly identify that he is a bad guy doing bad things, but I just love the matter of factness of him. Because that scene at the end yeah. was mirroring the scene with Maeve on the airplane, where it was sort of like, I mean, in one sense, he's right, you know? Like, yeah. <laughs> what are, no, how totally. are you going to save these people? <laughs> like, Yeah, and I think that's what part of what is so interesting about him is he... It's very Thanos that not, way. <laughs> yeah, and he's not stupid, but he's also just like doesn't have a moral center Mm -hmm. like when he went to go visit that guy who like raised him kind of he told him he was like what happens to like dogs when they don't have their mother when you're just there for breeding is they're like mean and hateful and he was just like (laughs) look in the mirror bro Mm -hmm. and i just like thought that was hilarious that like he basically was almost purposefully turned into a sociopath and now everybody is like what do we do now Mm -hmm. so what do we think happened with the explosion do we think that the baby is safe well i thought the baby was a soup we have no reason i was assuming i was assuming Mm -hmm. but i don't know i'm also not convinced that the end was real Oh, I mean, I'm why why would you not be just because or it was very idyllic. Yeah. I mean, I said like earlier too, that I was like, like she's not idyllic. dead. Like, well, no, but I just I, why would Homelander bring him there? Why would he save him and why would he bring him there? Well, because as I was mentioning earlier, and we've talked a little bit. Homelander isn't exactly a like super villain it's like he he's a, a sociopath but he's not trying to be yeah bad. i mean it's like i don't think he has an evil motive and and not with this i mean i i guess i don't exactly know why he would introduce hmm i don't read him as evil i mean he's a maybe bad... just to get butcher off his back yeah i don't know i mean that that's i okay. guess we'll have to wait and see it's like I mean, I'm not opposed. I'm just curious. It fe- especially after the darkness of the scenes in Madeline's house with where she's strapped to the bomb and with the baby and everything, that ending felt first of all, we like we 
we rejoin Butcher when he's like waking up from being unconscious outside in the sunshine. It just felt very idyllic well, I, in a way that didn't feel real to yeah, me. Yeah, I feel like he flew him somewhere. I mean, maybe, but that's that's a step. That that to me is being like two or three steps ahead of the show. Okay, I mean, that's fair. I, I have no, obviously no way of mm-hmm. knowing one way or the other, but that's that's how it felt to me. And yeah, it was too it was too nice. I guess Well, I got that. But I also kind of think it's because like that's a mind fuck for Butcher that it's like, oh, no, his wife and sure. Yeah. And, and not his child. But and I mean, her reaction seemed real like that. That's yeah. that reaction from her in a simulation is like <laughs> layers through well, the rabbit hole. Like through the, through the I was going to say, I, I'm not even sure maybe that it was a, a some kind glass. of simulation. I I would imagine I mean, I don't know. It just sort of felt more like a on his way to purgatory type of thing or well, something. it couldn't have been a dream because Butcher didn't know that. That's true. Fuck, I don't know. Yeah, I think it was real. Okay. I think it was just juxtaposition, but... I mean, I'll allow it, so I was it doesn't like, really matter. <laughs> I was, like, stumbling a little bit when I was talking about Homelander. I know that he's a bad guy. Like, I know he's doing bad things, but is what I was trying to get at is he doesn't seem chaotic evil. He seems more lawful. Sure. Yeah, That's I get that. That's what I mean. Is it's like I don't think like he's actively trying to like wreak havoc, but yeah, I mean we still have a lot of open ends. We did get to see Starlight do some stuff. I actually expected a little bit more. I don't know if that's just wanting like I don't know if the production values like Mm. Uh, I wanted her to be slightly more badass. I mean, she is new. Well, she's new to the team. She's not new to her powers. True. I mean, she was using them, but it was like, I kind of wanted her to throw down a little bit more. And it was like, it was cool seeing a train like outmaneuver all of her star stuff. Well, I was going to say also, sh- she might throw down a little harder if she were dealing with somebody more on her level like Homelander. Mm-hmm. But like, a train's just fast. Mm-hmm. He's not. He doesn't also have a laser eyes. So... Yeah, but that that stuff was kind of up in the air. I had another talking point and I and I forgot it. Was it about the rest of the boys, Mother's Milk and Frenchie and Kamiko? I mean, they're they're okay. Yeah, they're all fine. Kamiko seems to be acclimating, I would say. Yeah. I mean, she did her hair and makeup. Yeah, well. <laughs> that's all it takes. <laughs> <clears throat> I said seems to be acclimating, not she's better. <laughs> And we still have story. We go, well, yeah. Well, no, we still have, okay. No, that's what I was getting at. We still have plenty of story because we still have the deep spiraling out. We still have Queen Maeve. Mm-hmm. Queen Maeve is very interesting. I, I I agree. I like that she's a little bit not as because she's certainly not a secondary character, but I like that she's a little bit more aloof, like a little bit more mysterious in her because mm-hmm. the couple of scenes between her and Starlight were really good because it was really interesting to me when Starlight called her mean. Or like, what, yeah, like, is that what she said? Was it? Uh, it was something along that. But she basically was like, I don't have it in me to like deal with your shit right now. Will you mm-hmm. just like, will you just either go away or like be genuine with me? And she kind of did get a little genuine with her. It was really their relationship could use a lot more honing, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Like they could use a lot more time together since they seem to have so much in common in the first place. But then also, like, I really like even though Starlight is out of her element, she has Huey and like people to talk to, but Maeve doesn't appear to have anybody to talk to, especially now, like, Elizabeth Shue is gone, her, like, you know, lesbian ex-girlfriend doesn't want to hang out with her, and Homelander is a nightmare. She needs, she and Starlight need to be friends. Yeah, she seems like she's really been put through the ringer, and I mean, I guess having Mm -hmm. to be closeted in this world, you know, and and in a certain way, dually, doubly closeted, you know? Yeah. I, I think that can do a lot. So, yeah, I mean, we even still have the Ezekiel stuff. Like, we have a lot of things still up in the air. So I'm very excited. Yeah, they I did hope- leave a lot of, they left a lot of strings floating for mm-hmm. season two. I hope we don't have to wait too long for Me too. that. We haven't gotten hardly anything at all from Black Noir, but that feels purposeful. It feels very deliberate. Well, <laughs> also, that was hilarious at the, the piano. party. <laughs> Where he just sat down at the piano until he silently intimidated the guy from going away and then started playing the piano better than the professional pianist. Mm-hmm. It was incredible. It feels deliberate. I, I it, yeah, For me, I that's agree. not really a complaint. It feels like we're building to something from him. I mean, because we don't even know what yeah. he looks like. I, I've seen the actor, but... And yeah, then, but I, to- I even said to Will, I was like, that has to be like someone under that, right? 
You mean like, like a whoever, stunt like cast? whoever is, yeah, like whoever is per- just walking around in the suit is a different person than who we're going to see oh, his face at some point. I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. I mean, we'll see. I- I- I'll accept well, that. Well, I but... want it on the record just in case. <laughs> and then uh, we still haven't met Lamplighter, which that feels like he he didn't die, right? He just retired. I th- or did he die? Think so, but honestly, who knows? Hmm. I mean, I think they said he's retired. But it could go either way. I enjoyed the whole season and I think it ended I think it ended well enough for a season one and I think it left enough open for a season two. So I also I'm with you. I also hope it doesn't take too long for us to get season two. Well, I think I, I also think especially coming out of nowhere, this was such like such a thrill. Like maybe if we were building up to this, I would have had higher expectations. But like I said, I watched the trailer and I don't think the trailer s- sold it very well. So Yeah, I mean, although this could be one of those things where it's like... Oh, they're already filming season two. Oh, they are? Yeah, there's first photos from the set. Cool. Well, all I was going to say is I think this could be one of those things where, to a lesser extent, but it's like when we in... I guess we never talked about it on the show, but like you have mentioned in private that you think season two of Stranger Things suffered because it, we had the buildup of season one mm-hmm. where like season one was so good because we had no idea what it was going to be. And so I do worry a little bit about that with this for a season two. But I think for the most part, I think I'm not as worried because it's there's, be good. at the end of season one of Stranger Things, we had dealt with the issue. Okay, and there still was a plenty. level of closure. You're yeah, right. There's plenty yeah, of stuff right, up right. in the air with this. So, yeah, definitely. And the source material that Stranger Things did not have. So, they're also, taking also true. liberties with because I saw, I Googled it, and in the comic, it was not only not the deep that like assaulted Starlight in the beginning, but it was mm. Homelander and all of the boys at once. Oh, God. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I prefer this, which is a weird <laughs> thing to say. But good Christ, that's a lot. The only other thing that I'll say is that as we finish this, like as the last frame faded to black and the credits started, the literal loudest crash of thunder I've ever heard happened across the street from us. And it was like the you couldn't have planned the timing if you tried. It was so amazing. <laughs> so it has nothing to do with the show, but I thought it was interesting. Mm. Uh, yeah, the first picture is Huey and Frenchie and M.M. and Kumiko. And they're kind of bloody. Cool. Oh. But they're already filming, so. Sweet. I'm excited. All right. Okay. Well, uh, as always, you can follow us on Twitter, at So I'm Watching, Instagram, at So I'm Watching This Show. We're also on Facebook and Tumblr, So I'm Watching This Show. Anything for the Spotify playlist? A little Billy Joel, maybe? Uh, yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> what Billy Joel? <laughs> he just... Huey really liked Billy Joel and he was oh. wearing like a shirt and Bruce Springsteen and stuff a couple of times. <laughs> I was making a joke, but I mean, you were like, no, yeah, I'm, no I'm Billy good. Joel. I'm good. No, thank you. Piano man. <laughs> uh, well, Come in that in case, coach. <laughs> <laughs> no, that you, that has to be high school musical. It's not. <laughs> I don't song. believe it's you. Not from, from high school musical. It's on a commercial somewhere. <laughs> I'm ready to play today. All right, rate, review, and subscribe (laughs) wherever. Goodbye. Good job, Robot Nomi. (laughs) 